that we are tightening our policy. In fact, uh, as uh, one of the economists pointed out, there was no mention of f space for further rate cuts. Not at all. He didn't say that. No. But he did say whatever uh, uh, available space we are unable to use because of inflation. Something but to that I extent was there. Yeah, but I think what he said is to retain the accommodative stance into the next year. So lower rates for longer, at least a rate hike. Uh, is ruled out. Uh, definitely. Yeah. I take your point entirely, but he did not mention there is space for further rate cuts. No. Uh, the uh, absence of that phrase is very important. Uh, Aditya Narayan of Edelweiss is also with us. Uh, Aditya Narayan uh, looks like rates should not dip any further. That uh, seems to be one takeaway. Would that change your view of uh, interest rate sensitive realty stocks, housing finance companies, NBFCs? You know, I, I think at some level, you know, the rate cut cycle was in any case flagging. Uh, I think the risk this time around was that the commentary would be a little harsher than it has been. Uh, so I, I think to some extent it doesn't ruffle uh, that uh, that feather at all. I think the other thing with, with sectors like the financials basically is that, you know, uh, I mean, the interesting thing with this policy is there's actually very little conversation on asset quality. Right, which has been the focus of a lot of credit policies over the last uh, couple of years. And to some extent, I think, uh, as far as banking stocks are concerned, I think they're moving away a little bit from the rate element to what's it's happening to asset money. quality and when you're actually going to look out to, to growth. And the absence of conversation on asset quality, in my view, to, to some extent, you know, suggests that there's uh, uh, some stability there. It's not the risk it was perceived to be. And I would say at the end of the day, that provides a certain amount of support to these stocks rather than worrying too much about the rate cycle coming to an end. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He didn't mention about asset quality at all. And there were some economists who were worrying that this too cheap money might lead to mispricing of risk. But the governor said none of that. Uh, let me ask Ashwini Bhatia that Ashwini, you were very clear that uh, uh, rates are not coming down further. Uh, is there a chance that you all will hike any part of the uh, curve in terms of lending and uh, uh, because of this TLTRO being available and of course oodles of money in the interbank market, is credit offtake likely to increase? So if we are not seeing any signs on the corporate side, the demand there still is pretty muted. And on the retail side, I think we have to be with the markets. Uh, the liquidity being where it is, I don't think there's any scope right now to reduce further for sure. Uh, having said that, I think... Uh, about upping, uh, 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 Ashwini. You know, uh, home loan rates, I don't think even in the previous cycle went below 7. If I remember right, yeah. 7 was the least. Right. So now we are getting for 6.9 and 6.75 also. And some of my colleagues who are, uh, you know, who have, uh, uh, who have it tagged to the T-bill are paying as low as 5.9 for some EMIs. So, will they rise is what I'm asking. So, if they're at 5.7, my I would urge them to start hedging. You know, they, they won't remain there for too long. And uh, 6.7, 6.9 is, is a pretty good rate if you, if you ask me. Uh, depending on market conditions, and I'm sure for the next six months at, at least, the rates are not going to go up. I think that is the guidance that uh, the monetary policy has given us this morning to say that till March at least, uh, looking at the uneven growth that they have seen, they'll be patient, but they'll not disturb liquidity also at the same time. Uh, the deposit growth still remains robust, although it's muted a little bit in the last couple of months but that doesn't mean that we'll increase rates in a hurry uh, Mr. Renu Kohli apologies for keeping you waiting this long and we appreciate your patience uh, you know what was your uh, you know reading of the RBI statement lower for longer but no rate cut anytime soon um, first of all, I'm uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to air my views. Uh, I'm not at all surprised uh, at the monetary review because uh, it was pretty much expected from the October's review, the commitment that had 
they had given about continuing the accommodative stance into the next financial year, at least the early, as long as we had the, uh, for, for which we had the projections in October. So uh, RBI has done well actually to reiterate its accommodative stance into FY 2022 and uh, not to be bothered too much about uh, the excess liquidity. It's just at the short end of the curve and which is directly under the central bank's control. It can reverse it or it can tighten it any time should it feel the need. Um, about inflation, it's for the government to actually attend to the supply side pressures. I don't think that the Reserve Bank can do much about it. What they have to worry about is core inflation. It was going downward and they have to they should they will be watching it very very carefully the trouble is that it is a very uncertain time even globally about what the inflation outcome could be uh, outcomes could be whether they would they would be in the um, uh, temporary or persistent because there is a lot of you know pent-up demand which is coming back and uh, so there is a bit of difficulty in understanding exactly the outlook for inflation uh, about its growth uh, focus, the MPC was uh, had uh, very uh, in October itself said you know completely focused upon growth, and they have maintained that, which is a good thing. Uh, they have maintained this again, this uh, thing, and it will continue. So that sends very uh, positive signals uh, across, and it doesn't disturb the economic environment at all. Uh, I would worry about one thing, which is the credit demand. Now, that's where the monetary impact mm. needs to show itself. And we haven't seen any kind of response uh, so far yeah. because the economy and particularly the supply side is still recovering from the lockdowns and the unlocking is still uh, yeah. taking place. It is understandable the last six months. My worry is actually uh, the exceptional easing measures starting with interest rate cuts and the TLT, TLT ROs uh, predate the pandemic yeah. and from early 2019 and December 2019 in particular a lot of OMOs everything has happened mm. and yet uh, there has been uh, no response from the credit demand side yep. in fact if we ended the March 2019 the 1920 year with credit growth actually just decelerating to half of that over the previous year, that's it was right. something like 6.7 percent. Yeah, and that's where the real worry uh, concern lies. Absolutely, and that's what our bankers are telling us. Ashwini says, "Where is the demand uh, for uh, credit?" So it's not uh, really so much the cost of money or the availability of money. Uh, Malikarjun Rao, a final question to you: Do you think uh, uh, you know interest rates, lending rates, will go up at all? And uh, uh, I mean or you just see them remaining flat for now and uh, uh, credit growth? Interest rate will be flat. I don't expect interest rates to go further, though they will not go down. Now, regarding the credit growth is concerned, if you have seen mid-time industry, mid-corporate industry and services industry, we have seen good amount of growth year on year to the extent of 16% and 10%. Whereas in the large corporate segment, the demand has been very muted. So while we expect the festive no. impact to continue, sustain up to March, uh -huh. but the critical mass increase comes only in the corporate industry. Okay. So we have to wait and see how the demand comes up for credit growth. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Rao. Uh, Anand Bagri of RBL has also joined us. Anand, are you sitting in front of a screen? We uh, Most people have joined us from home and so they are able to tell us whether, uh, you know, the TREPS rate, the CP rates uh, up to three months have fallen or remained static what so, what the what the the already, so the markets are already already pricing and uh, because of this huge liquidity glut which which is there in the market so i believe that the markets are flat as of now there has been no major uh, change in the movement in, in the markets maybe a couple of basis points uh, two to five basis points here and there otherwise the markets remain flat india is down as by about uh, five basis points we yeah. it, it was at about 5.93 also in the morning now yeah. it is at 5.8990, so about three basis points lower on the 10 year. But uh, right. any anything in the shorter term at all? So, on the shorter term, the, the markets have been more or less flat. There is no major movement seen on the shorter term. Data. Okay, okay. So, uh, either down by three to five basis points there also. All right. So, Aditya Narayan, therefore, to you, do you think now the equity markets have got a clean chip from uh, the RBI that rates are going to remain low? And you think this will further fuel the rally that's already hugely underway? 
Yeah, see, I think you already had a very, very strong rally. So I think to some extent, I think <laughs> there will be a certain amount of leveling off. Uh, I think the message that, as I mentioned initially, was that uh, one, I think asset quality seems to be a little bit of an issue of the past. So I think that provides a certain amount of relief. The second thing is, I think transmission is happening. Well, you know, a lot of uh, commentators have mentioned that there hasn't been enough demand. Uh, the reality is transmission is tending to uh, tending to happen. I think the third thing is, uh, and I think, you know, this is an overlay from, from what the governor has said, is that there is a reluctance to go against the global easing that you are effectively tending to see. And I think as long as that stays, you will end up getting a reasonable amount of support for the market. But I think specifically for, uh, for, for this policy, I think the fact that the commentary remained dovish, I think would have been more a relief rather than anything that will necessarily on a sustainable basis uh, drive the markets at this point in time i think one you know one needs to keep in fact keep in mind the fact that a lot of the market performance that you've seen has been really a global uh, overlay of markets being strong and of both fiscal and monetary policy being very very decided right i think as far as india is concerned from a monetary perspective you are getting support from a fiscal support, fiscal side, there probably would need to be a little bit more. Uh, okay. So bottom line, I think it just reassures <laughs> the market. I'm not sure if it's enough to really sustain or provide a, a next leg of, uh, of, of a kicker uh, to the markets. Okay, uh, Anant, uh, final thoughts from you. Uh, you know, what is the sequence of events you see from here on? Uh, you know, uh, perhaps a more neutral tone of the policy, a CRR cut, uh, a reversal that is expected in March, reduction of the reverse repo repo corridor, then perhaps a hike. Uh, what's your sense? So, Ritu, very quickly, um, look, um, the short end markets, actually, the yields have come down by about five, six basis points on the OIS market, at least. So, there is a bit of a relief going through with the accommodative stance and the fact that the RBI has not said anything about uh, withdrawal of it, etc. Going forward, look, um, uh, things are going to get tougher, Ritu and, and Lata. Um, look, uh, inflation is looking very uncertain. We hope that productivity improves. We hope food prices come down. But as the corrections done to the inflation estimates show by the RBI, the trajectory is not looking good at all. Okay. Now, we are going to see a growth recovery as well. We know that. You know, Q1 of next year, we will see a growth recovery. And, and hopefully, credit offtake takes off as well. And by the way, the fiscal deficit will remain. It's not going anywhere the next fiscal year. We will still see a fiscal stra strain, and we will see the need to finance a fiscal deficit. And as Sajid mentioned, we will see FX inflows coming through as well. So it's going to be a very funny and toxic kind of mix of parameters that you have to juggle with going forward. Uh, I wouldn't be very sure about the you know quick withdrawal of liquidity, etc. RBI will play it one thing at a time. Right now, they're very focused on growth and, and giving growth a chance. Um, depending upon how things pan out from here, they will, I guess, take a call on what needs to be done. I'm guessing that yields will have to move up the next financial year, but it will be a very, very delicate balance. Okay. Uh, Arun, besides your FX question, what is the one question you want to ask the governor? <laughs> uh, plenty of questions. And the point you made well, about... You get only one. <laughs> I, I guess the uh, the internal working group um, you know, on banking, mm -hmm. uh, I can yeah. think of 10 questions on that. I'm oh, sure absolutely. Yeah. That will dominate the conference, I would assume. Uh, Neeraj, what's the one thing you would want to hear from the governor? Uh, I, I think uh, clearly we are in a wait and watch mode as far as the MPC is concerned. But, uh, you know, exit from liquidity is something that the market mm. will need some clarity upon. There was nothing in this policy. Uh, at some point in time, they will have to tell us that how do they plan to taper this off. Uh, and how how slowly and gently this can be done, uh, because that is going to determine as far as the course of interest rates in the real economy is concerned, right? While bond yields may actually uh, react to the repo rate and the changes in the policy rates, mm. but it's the liquidity which determines the real rates in the economy, the deposit and lending rates. So I think clarity on that going forward in the next, I would say, next policy, mm. uh, what's the timeline around it, is the key thing that I will watch out for. But as of now, as a man heading a large treasury which buys bonds regularly, you think now there's no danger to the RBI, uh, to the government's borrowing? I think we are in a very stable 5-10 basis points volatility, you know, rates regime right now for the time being over the next one, one and a half months. And I think this is very supportive of issuance both by the government as well as the corporate sector. So I think I would see the next quarter a good amount of issuance activity from corporates as well. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Gentlemen and Renu Kohli, thank you very much for joining us. 
and help us parse the Reserve Bank Governor's monetary policy statement. Uh, the key takeaway is that the MPC and the gov uh, RBI have leaned in favor of growth over inflation. They have upped the inflation forecast, but uh, they're at the moment not doing anything about it without saying they are looking through the higher inflation. And uh, the, uh, on the liquidity front, all that the governor has said is that we have instruments, we will use them at some point in time. So at the moment, the market has interpreted that at the moment, the liquidity is going to remain plentiful. Mm. So if anything, we've seen yields fall. Absolutely. And to read out uh, now that we have the MPC statement, uh, you know, on future rate cuts, that's what you were asking. Uh, the MPC is of the view that inflation is likely to remain elevated, barring the transient relief in the winter months from prices of perishables. The constra this constrains the monetary policy at the current juncture from using the space available to act in support of growth. Okay. So they're clearly saying there is no space at the moment. They were almost said that. They said this constrains us from using the available space. Yeah. So uh, you have to uh, probably, they've also not clearly said as you uh, hmm. pointed out hmm. that there is space available. So maybe they've almost hinted that uh, there are no further rate cuts. But the market's taking with both hands that they have left liquidity as is not draining it and that they are looking through inflation at this point in time. That's exactly what the market wanted to hear. And that explains why uh, you saw bond yields fall off. You saw the Nifty rushing to 45, uh, sorry, the Sensex rushing to 45,000, the Nifty rushing to 33,200, and the Nifty Bank as well making its way towards the 30,000 mark. It's a great policy as far as growth is concerned, and that's exactly why all the markets are cheering. We wrap up the special coverage of the monetary policy with a promise that we will be back at noon when the governor will take questions from the press. For the moment, it's time for trading out.